Hello guys. Let's open these. How's it going? It's cold. It's very, very, very cold outside. Uh, but I wanted to film this video and I wanted to have my van in it. I don't know why, but that's what we're gonna do. I kind of wanted to talk about how to get into the van life because I've been living out of my van here traveling. I went for two and a half months and I've been back for a bit now and I just kind of wanted to get into how to, how to get started really because like there's a lot of different videos out there and a lot of people do different things. Some of the things that I did didn't really work for what I was trying to get out of it. So I kind of wanted to make a little guide and show for your sake what would probably be best for you. So we'll dive into uh, different types of vehicles here. <laughs> it's a little cold out. Different types of vehicles you can choose from and their, their benefits to each uh, type of vehicle. Because I really wasn't informed when I started. I didn't really have anybody telling me what to choose. I kind of just saw everybody doing their own thing and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just do what they're doing. So I kind of just winged it and it worked, definitely worked. I would have done things differently if I would have been more informed. So it really depends on how long you plan on staying out on the road. If you're going for just a short little while, then you don't really need to do anything too extreme because it really it'll change how much you want to invest in the initial setup like i invested way way too much probably for what i was doing i bought the van uh, around christmas and i worked on it and i left in first day of august so that's like a lot of things i was fixing up changing and i built everything from scratch so that would be a circumstance of putting too much investment into something I was just trying to get my toes wet. So for instance, if you're gonna go and you're just gonna jump right in and you're gonna be living out of your van or vehicle or whatever you decide to choose uh, permanently for you don't know how long, then you might wanna get something a little more comfortable than like a small truck or a minivan type of thing. Like I took this van, which is, it's not tall or anything like that, and I'm, I'm six foot two, and I was comfortable. Like I, if I had the option, I would, I could have gone in here for like probably like a year or so before I wanted to probably change anything because I was fine going the way I was. I just ran out of money and it was getting cold out, so that's why my trip came to and end a little earlier. Another question for picking the vehicle is if you're gonna be doing a lot of driving or not. If you're gonna be driving all over the place, gas mileage does add up. That was my biggest expense. I spent so much money on gas. This vehicle here, I would say online it told me I think it was about 12 miles per gallon that I was getting on this thing, but it felt a lot less than that. I just didn't feel like I was getting very much out of it. So for my needs, I was wanting to travel. What kind of van living do you also plan on doing? Are you going to be wanting to travel around and see the site? So you're gonna to wanna to be staying in one city, like if you're still working, then you might be staying in the same location. But if you work online or if you don't have a job, you're really free to go wherever and that's where gas can really add up is in those long drives. And it will also impact the type of vehicle that you wanna get if you wanna be more stealthy if you're staying in the same area for a long period of time. Like this vehicle is not stealthy whatsoever. And uh, I got by, I stayed in places that I probably wasn't supposed to stay in. And uh, I did a lot of Walmart parking, but a lot of places I probably shouldn't have stayed and. I got kicked out of a few places, but it wasn't it wasn't a common thing. Nobody really cared. So let's get in. Let's get into a little bit more of the choices of vehicles that you can pick from. So we'll start from most stealthy, in my opinion, to the least stealthy. But along with going from stealthy to not stealthy, the not stealthy always seem to be a lot more comfortable and home cozy, very easy to live out of type of vehicles. So I will start off with, in my opinion, the most stealthy, kind of, they're kind of tied in a way. At the same time, they're not tied. For instance, you have uh, trucks, you know, not towing anything, just a truck with a, uh, the kind of the cover in the back. Some people will just put a bed in there. Some, 
storage stuff. And the thing with the truck like that is nobody's gonna expect you to be sleeping in there. Especially because if they go look in, they're not gonna see anything because you can completely cover out the back, uh, the back area, completely cover it up. Nobody will know unless they see you in there or hear, hear you in there. So there's not even gonna be like a question whether someone thinks you're sleeping in there or not. The next one, is the minivan and the minivan is the most common vehicle you're ever gonna see and it is pretty spacious you can just throw a mattress in the back there have everything you need and it's golden like it's more questionable because like it's bigger it's more spacious people might like they might question it it's not gonna be a common question for sure uh, the thing that I would say brings up the minivan is how common it is compared to a truck like that type of truck, you're gonna see a little less often than the minivan, but they're both very stealthy. Now, the next one up after minivan, I would say is like a van, like the kind of thing that I'm running right here. Uh, it would be a lot more stealthy if it was a normal color, like a white or anything other than blue with Sharpie design all over it. So I kind of don't really count in that category. Uh, I would say mine's more equivalent to uh, a trailer almost type setup because it's like it stands out so people they get more attention but I yet again I didn't really have any too many issues at all so the next one up would be a sprinter van uh, it's a little more campery people can tell it's still not gonna be bad if it looks more like a cargo van that you're just like doing some work it's not gonna be too questionable then you got a truck and trailer so these are all just different options that I'm listing off and then we're gonna get into them a little more. The truck and trailer is an option because you can park your trailer somewhere and have your truck and go drive around and you don't have to tow the thing everywhere. I've seen a lot of people where they just de-hitch their trailer in a you know, Walmart parking lot and they just leave it there. When I was in Calgary for a week, it didn't move. There was a trailer there that just didn't move and it was by itself and nobody really did anything about it. It was just doing its thing, nobody cared. Depends on the Walmart, right? Like there's some that allow you and don't care. There's some that give you a few days. So you can uh, look into that and I'll tell you a little more about what I, how I did that with my Walmarts. Next one up I would say is a camper. Uh, just a small camper, like those little short bus type ones. That would be your second least stealthy vehicle, but also, right, you have more space, you have more comfort. You can have like a bed, storage, shower, bathroom it's it's pretty golden and then of course the least being like a, a bus or an RV type thing where those are huge and they're kind of a pain to take around but there's a lot of space and a lot of freedom with those especially if you're living out of it permanently you have you would have everything you really need there so that's those are things to take into consideration for stealth is what kind of how much stealth do you need for your situation are you going to be camping out in front of apartments trying to hide away are you going to be out camping a lot uh, you need to think about what type of travel that you're going to be doing and for me i was just wanting to see the world and most of the time i just went into the city so i like to stay at walmart's because they were cozy there was other campers there i just felt more more at home really because like everybody else was doing it there as well so it was like this whole underground community and you kind of felt like you belong there compared off on your own just being like by yourself so there's that and like you can park in like parking lots sometimes they don't say if they say I usually leave if they say no overnight parking I'll usually leave and then you can park in front of apartments if you're very stealth because people will just think that you're visiting a friend or it depends if you have to park in visitor parking or if you're out on the street the streets are usually pretty good for not caring you have rest stops, which I actually never stayed at a rest stop. I always went inside the city. Uh, I did stay at a truck stop, but that's that's a completely different thing. Truck stops are all right. They uh, usually allow two days at least, and they don't question it. They have like bathrooms and stuff like that there. And then the good old Walmarts. Walmarts, <laughs> they love you. They They let you stay wherever you want. Unless you're connected to like a shopping center, then they can uh, kick you out. But usually when Walmart's off on its own, it's pretty good. And you'll usually see other campers there. And the thing that I used for finding my Walmarts is uh, a website called All Stays. So you do like All Stays Walmart and then you would do the area that you're in. 
and it would show you a list of Walmarts that do allow overnight parking, don't allow overnight parking, so you don't just show up at a Walmart and be like, oh no, I wasted all my time trying to get here when I should have just looked at this. And that's what I used a lot of the time to just find, find Walmarts because other people, other campers, uh, they'll leave their review and let you know if it's good or not. So like I was talking about with a lot of driving, you have to take into consider the gas mileage of vehicles. Uh, so I did a little test. I looked up gas mileages for like aver the average gas mileage for uh, a 2003 uh, vehicle of each category just to kind of get a little guide. And the minivan did win. The minivan was an average around 20 miles per gallon. And like I said, this thing was probably like 12 or less. But usually vans are a lot better, but I don't know, this van's uh, V8. So trucks about 15 miles per gallon you have a regular van here they come at about like 13 to 14 same with the sprinter truck and trailer uh, it was hard to find like uh, an actual thing so i had to go onto like forums and stuff but they said a truck that had between 18 and 20 miles per gallon pulling a trailer got around 10 miles per gallon so a lot less but then you have the campers the short bus type things those came in about 9 to 11 miles per gallon and then you had the bus RVs, which were a 6.5 to 9 miles per gallon, which... So if you're doing a lot of driving, it does add up. And don't, don't take that lightly, because I was just on a little round trip, and I spent way more than I thought I would on gas. It just added up. Even cheap gas, it was just going by so fast, it just burned through it. So that is definitely something you have to take into consideration. If you're going to stay in one area for a long period of time, like especially areas that you're not sure of. Um, I really like having a stealthy vehicle, which I don't have, which I would have preferred to have because this thing stands out so much. So if I stay in like a certain Walmart for a long period of time, for like more than like two days, I feel bad that they're like judging me and they're like, I gotta move on because either they'll kick me out or something because they can tell. But if I had like a minivan that was just super common, they would have no way of actually telling if it was the same one unless they actually came and checked my plates or something like that. So there's a there's more comfort in having a stealthy vehicle even if you're not stealth camping. So yeah, another th thing that I wanted to talk about, about the van life or whatever vehicle you choose, the truck life, the RV life, is what kind, if you're gonna be living out of it like a house type thing. Mine was more of a travel mobile to get me place to place and then also a place to sleep because I didn't want to pay the absurd fees for either a hotel or a hostel, which can add up depending on the area you're in. So that's mainly what I wanted out of this. And then I just wanted some utilities and stuff to like kind of make me a little more at home. Now I went full out, right? I got solar power, I got a sink, I got a stove. I was very cozy here and the downside of that is having the van, which I could put into a couch and just kind of chill inside. It was very nice. And that was the problem. It was too comfortable for me. I wanted something to push me to get out every single day. If I had a minivan, let's say, and I just threw a mattress in the back, it wouldn't be very comfortable to sit in all day and do like nothing. It would make me get out and adventure, walk around, because a lot of days with the van, I would just sit inside the van, like watch movies and chill out, which was nice, don't get me wrong. It was just, it wasn't what I wanted out of the trip and I got stuck in my little comfort zone. And so I didn't push me to get out as much. So if you have like a truck with like a little thing in the back or a minivan, it's gonna make you wanna get out more cause you're not gonna be comfortable just lying on your bed all day. So if you have like a bus RV, you're gonna have everything inside and there's not gonna be really a need for you to leave unless you're like, ah, let's go do this today. So it's the whole comfort factor, right? Another thing with my trip was that I didn't really know how long I was gonna travel for and I didn't really even think about it. I was just gonna go until I ran out of money and then I didn't know what I was gonna do after that. I didn't think about what's gonna happen when I'm done. And so I got back and then it's like, do I need the van? Like I would, I would sell this vehicle, but I feel like it's gonna be very complicated because everything is customly made. And it's not perfect for me, it's cozy, 
but it's not perfect. So selling is going to be a little more complicated if I even can sell it. So I'm kind of either stuck with this vehicle because I wanted to change my plans and do something else for a bit. But if I was to have gotten a minivan instead or something that was already made instead of doing it myself, it's easier to sell, especially a minivan. It's really easy to sell and then you have your money back almost. So it's like a small investment. So you buy a minivan, you throw a mattress in, you throw a cooler in, and you throw in a couple other things and you're good to go compared to building the whole thing yourself. So I was, I'm thinking, for your sake, if you're not really sure what you're getting yourself into, it may almost be best to buy the minivan or the truck and, or a camper or whatever besides doing it yourself then you can always, if it wasn't for you or if you wanted to change something after you realized after traveling that you preferred something else, then you have the option to sell easier and you're maybe good to go again. Yeah, this is an amazing experience, 10 out of 10. Whatever you may do, it's incredible and I had really the time of my life on my little trip that I did and I'm sure any of you that even questions like, am I gonna enjoy this? You probably already know that you're going to enjoy it. You're just kind of a little more nervous because if you're questioning it, you're already better, not better, but you're already so close to just doing it. And it's not that hard to get into, guys. Just the easiest way, get a minivan. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't need to have the perfect situation. It can be so easy. And you don't need to customize everything like everybody else seems to do, which I did, which I thought that I had to do instead of just buying a minivan and just throwing in a bed and a couple storage units underneath, cooler, stove, you know? It's not, it's not hard to get into. And it, does, it doesn't have to be a huge investment for you if you're questioning it, because a minivan is still a useful vehicle to get around, whether you are living out of it or not. So yeah, so I'd like to have a little series on how to get into it and all the things that you need to cover. So if you have any questions, I'll be sure to try and make sure they're answered for you either in the comments or in a separate video, a part of the series altogether. So yeah, I hope you guys get into this, have a great adventure, live an awesome life, and succeed! <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know.